Hey there, we're back in the vegetable garden today, and today we're doing some more beautification here. Um, you can see I've got these containers on either side of me. This is on either side of the, what I call the front door. And um, these containers got here out of sort of, um, to solve a problem. So last year I had climbing roses planted in the ground here, and they did not do well. The one on this side did okay. The one on this side completely rotted out. The hole kept filling up with water. So it was a bit of a mystery where this water was coming from. I was a little bit afraid that our drip system had been leaking because we actually buried the main lines underneath the gravel. And I thought that would really be a bummer if that happened because we'd have to dig that all up. And then we turned off the drip system for a while and it kept happening. So we knew it wasn't the drip system. And then I started to get really worried because our septic mound is not far from here. And I thought, what if we've got some sort of septic problem? Um, that wasn't the case. And we finally for sure figured it out this winter when I came out here in winter and all of the stones that I had laid on the little path out here were like floated up. Um, turns out, and then the whole area of the grass sort of grass, which is mostly moss behind me. And by the way, the moss should have been a clue about what was going on. This is like full clay right here, no drainage whatsoever. And that moss should have been a clue that it was shady with poor drainage because that's kind of the conditions that moss likes. So we didn't have a lot of options other than to really do something to fix the drainage problem here, which sounded like no fun. So what's the solution? Stick a container on top of it. So that's what we've done here. So I've got these two containers. I'm going to be planting um, roses in them. I'm also ordered some clematis that are coming. The idea is the clematis go over the arbors, roses in the middle, and then I'll just plant like a simple annual along the front of it just to make it pretty. Um, but I want to show you first of all what we did to these containers. So these containers are teak and I did um, oil them uh, just for a little bit of protection. But as you can see on the inside here, we have something pink. So the first of all, these are a slat bottom on these. So the soil would have gone right through them. And so what we did was we lined the entire thing with um, one inch insulation foam board. And then at the bottom, I have put a layer of landscape fabric over that. and there are holes through the entire thing. So there are holes straight through the landscape fabric. You can kind of see some there. Straight through the landscape fabric, through the insulation that will drain out through the slats in the bottom. So the reason we have this insulation board here is that I don't want to have to move these containers for winter and I'm planning to plant shrubs in here, which I don't want to have to worry about. So the clematis that is going in here is uh, zone three. So no problem there whatsoever, because the general rule of thumb is that um, if you're two zones lower, you should be safe to overwinter in a container. The rose, however, which is a David Austin rose called um, Fighting Temeraire, which is actually a single rose, not your typical um, David Austin, um, but kind of sunset colors, really pretty. Um, and I just I fell in love with it. Um, I was shopping at David Austin um, to get some roses for someone else and then I came across it and then I ended up ordering them. So that's the long story of how we end up with that rose, which is a zone five. So my hope is that by adding some additional insulation to this pot and providing some winter protection, maybe I'll do some sort of cage with leaves in it or something, but I will protect the crown that we hopefully we'll be able to overwinter that. So that's the goal. So that's what the insulation is about. I think it'll also help protect the inside of the pot a little bit, which wasn't the original intent, but that's a nice little bonus. I have run drip to this. This is the first container I've ever run drip to in my life. But um, this vegetable garden, because I've got everything on drip, I can actually leave this vegetable garden for a week and not worry about it, which is really, really nice. If we ever get to, if we ever get to go on vacation again, that'll be nice. Um, so if I have this all on a timer, then this should all be good to go. And plus it's really important when you're growing shrubs and containers that you keep up on the watering, in particular for something like clematis and roses, both of which, you know, they want consistent water. So that's how we have the pot set up here. So I've already mixed up uh, my, most of my soil here in the wheelbarrow and I'll probably this, I don't know how, how far this will go. Um, once again, I'm using that um, Organic Mechanics container blend. Um, they sent me some soil this year to use in my projects. Um, in my last video, um, I had a lot of questions about 
why I'm trying to go peat free. Um, it's an environmental reason. Um, so not to get in the weeds on this, but just quickly to address that. So peat bogs are huge carbon sinks. They soak, they take, I think it takes like 20 years to create a new one inch of peat or something like that. Um, and what they do is they trap carbon. And when you harvest peat and spread it around, you release that carbon back into the atmosphere. And um, there's a lot of information out there. Um, people will tell you different things about it. But what I will say is that there are fabulous alternatives to using peat. So there's really no need to use something that might even have the potential of being harmful. And I think it's more than potential personally, but I think everyone's gonna have their own opinion on that. The other thing is that if you've ever used a potting mix that is primarily peat and you allow it to dry out, it is almost impossible to get that wet again. It just it seems to never really moisten again. So that's one another great reason to avoid it. Plus this is all organic, so that's why I'm really liking these products a lot. And then I've also mixed in again, I'm using, oops, well, now we have some elsewhere. That's always me <laughs> spilling something. Biochar blend again, 10% um, of the overall mix is supposed to be biochar. I am gonna put in a small amount of manure um, just to add some extra rich richness here. The clematis in particular will appreciate that. And um, the rose will too. I'm always a little wary of putting too much uh, manure though in a container planting because manure really does um, uh, bog down the drainage a little bit. So I'm always really wary about not putting in too much of that. And then I am gonna use um, the Biotone uh, starter fertilizer. Normally I like to use mycorrhizal fungi on um, my roses when I plant them. I have none and we are living in this age of if you don't have it right now, you just make do with what you have. So this is what I have. This is what we're gonna use. I'm sure it'll work great. Hey, one other tip you guys, if you get um, big bags of some sort of soil mix, save those bags because I hang on to these. This is gonna sound so corny. I hang on to these, but if I find a person who has composted well-aged manure for the digging, these are perfect and you fill them up about halfway that way you don't have to worry about transporting manure in your car you just put it in a bag and it works out great so i always save these bags right now i'm actually using some of them to save um, leaves i put too much leaf mulch on top of my garden beds this year uh, in the vegetable garden and it didn't break down all of it so i'm scraping some of it off and just storing it in those bags because it will make great mulch i just don't need it right this moment so So one of the questions that I know someone's gonna ask is, could I fill the bottom of these with something else to take up some of that volume? And the answer is possibly, but I rarely, or basically never do that with shrubs because shrubs need as much space and as much soil as they can get in a container. Plus the more soil volume you have in there, the more water retention it'll have and the less you will have to water. Okay, so here's the rose. Um, these bare root roses are always so beautiful when they come. I've had great success with the bare root roses um, from David Austin. In fact, I have better success the first year with them than I often do the second year, um, which probably says more about how I'm growing roses than anything. But um, this has been soaking for a couple of hours, three hours, maybe two and a half hours. And um, you know, you want to bury roses. This is one of those things that you plant um, deeply. So we're at, there's going to be very few stems actually sticking out of this rose um, when we're done here. Now, this rose is supposed to get, actually, it's a shrub rose. It's, it should get actually pretty wide. They say four and a half feet wide, uh, which would make it too big for this spot. I have never once had a problem with a rose getting too big. I should be so lucky as to have a rose get too big. So I'm totally good with planting this year. But you know what? Um, I am going to move this forward a touch. There we go. Just to give, because the clematis is going to go in the back here, and I just want to make sure that clematis has plenty of room to stretch out back there. Anyways, key is obviously to water it really, really, really well. Any rose when you plant it, just give it a really nice big drink. So admittedly, it doesn't really look like much right now, but 
you know, let's be honest, most containers don't look great at first. Um, they'll grow in. I am confident they'll do really well this year. What happens after that, we will see. Um, I stopped filling up the soil level a little bit because um, I knew I'd be planting that clematis in there and I'm gonna have to dig out a lot of the soil in order to plant that clematis. So it seemed to me like there was no point in continuing to add more soil that I would just have to take out in order to add more in. And you can see some of that insulation board right now. By the time I get that clematis planted and the annuals, that should disappear. And if it doesn't, I can always put a layer of mulch on top of it. I sort of like to use mulch in shrub containers anyway. So that works out uh, pretty well. So that's that. When this is done, this should be a beautiful entryway to the garden. I forgot to mention that these roses are supposed to have a fabulous honey scent. And to me, I'm really just about roses that have scent lately. Um, I don't mind growing other kinds of roses, but I don't even really consider them to be roses. I consider them to be just shrubs. So fabulous honey scent. Imagine a clematis going over the top. Let's cross our fingers and hope that comes to fruition. Hey, thank you for watching, you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe so you can keep following to see what happens in this garden, see if these roses work, see what happens with that clematis, and we will follow this stuff all summer. I need three bags of the container soil. And there's a clematis going in here for which I'm going to have to dig fairly deeply to plant. <laughs>